Hi, Miss Jamie here from Crystal Lake Public Library's Youth Department. I have found a really cool project I would like to share with you today. We will be making a dinosaur habitat. But first, I would like to share a book with you explaining what a habitat is. The book I'm reading today is called Habitats of the World. It is written by Cindy McKay and translated by Yanitzia Canetti. It is a dual language book, both Spanish and English, and there's text for advanced readers on the left side and beginning readers on the right side. It is published by Treasure Bay. We live on an amazing planet called Earth. It is the only planet in our solar system that has liquid water and oxygen to breathe. So far, it is the only planet we know of where life is possible. Earth has a huge variety of environments where animals can live. The place where an animal lives is called its habitat. A habitat provides the right water, food, and shelter for its native wildlife. We've got polar bears and birds and a llama. The largest habitat on Earth is the ocean. The salty water of Earth's five oceans covers almost three quarters of the planet. Just like on land, under the water are volcanoes and mountains, valleys, and plains. Many different kinds of sea animals live in this huge habitat. Coral reefs provide a habitat near the shore where the water is shallow and warm. The reefs sustain over a thousand types of colorful fish, as well as dolphins, turtles, sharks, and rays. There are many different kinds of corals, and they are all living organisms that can grow and change. And here's some of the different types here. Ocean water is salty. The rest of the water on Earth is called fresh water. Lakes are one kind of freshwater habitat. Many plants and animals, as well as many people, depend on the salt-free water of lakes to live. Rivers provide another kind of freshwater habitat. Some animals live in or near the river while others only go there to drink and cool themselves. There's a hippopotamus, they live right by the water. Wetlands such as swamps and marshes and bogs are habitats where shallow water will cover the soil for a good part of the year. It is home to a variety of fish, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, insects, and birds. And here we have a crane eating a fish. Swamps have many trees growing in and around them. A mangrove swamp is especially rich in its variety of life. Mangrove trees have enormous roots that provide shelter for fish, birds, turtles, lizards, manatees, and alligators. The polar regions are the coldest places on Earth. Much of the water is frozen in ice sheets and glaciers. Animals here have a very thick layer of fat to keep them warm. The desert is a harsh habitat where it is very hot and there is very little water. The animals that live in the desert all need water to live. When they find water, Venomous gila monsters drink as much as they can and store the water in their bladders to help them survive long, dry periods in the desert. Camels store water in their bloodstream. High mountain ranges are found all over the world. 
Native plants and animals must tolerate lower oxygen levels and extreme changes in temperature. The animals also must be good climbers. Goats, deer, and llamas have hooves especially designed for climbing. And there's some mountain goats. While some animals live on mountains, others live inside them. Mountain caves provide a perfect habitat for many amphibians, spiders, insects, and some types of fish. Mammals, such as raccoons and bears, may use caves to sleep in or for shelter in harsh weather. And here we have some bats that live in the caves, and they are mammals also. Deciduous forests are especially beautiful in the fall before the trees lose their leaves. Some animals, such as deer and elk, live in this habitat all year long. Other animals, such as birds and butterflies, migrate to warmer climates when the weather turns cold. Bears stay in the forest and hibernate. A coniferous forest contains mostly evergreen trees, such as pine and fir. In this habitat, the winters are long and the summers are cool. Large predators, such as bears, lynx, and wolves, can be found here. Many plant eaters also make this their home. Tropical rainforests sustain more than half of all species of planets and animals on Earth. Rainforests contain four layers of habitat, emergent, canopy, understory, and floor. The emergent layer gets the most sun. Living here are monkeys, birds, butterflies, lizards, and bugs. The understory layer is the area beneath the leaves of the trees. It is made up of vines and other dense ve vegetation. Here you find more birds, butterflies, snakes, and frogs. Beneath the understory is the forest floor. There's a tiger on the forest floor and a gorilla. Grasslands provide a completely different habitat for animals with open areas of grass and other low growing plants. There are few trees or places to hide. So speed is important for these animals that are here. The grasslands of North America are called prairies. There's a buffalo. African grass, grasslands are called savannas. Elephants, rhinos, and giraffes munch on the trees and grasses here. Lions, cheetahs, and hyenas are some of the predators on the savanna. The predators prey on herds of animals, including giraffes and zebras. You gotta run very fast if you are a zebra or a giraffe. Life thrives in the different habitats on our planet. Unfortunately, many of these habitats are in danger. Pollution and cutting down forests can harm or destroy habitats. When this happens, it is hard for animals to adapt and survive. The beauty and diversity of the plants and animals on Earth are truly remarkable. It is our responsibility to preserve and protect this wondrous planet for future generations. Hope you enjoyed our book on habitats. And now for the fun part, we get to make our own dinosaur habitat. I have started with a storage container. I have put in some potting soil. And then I picked up a couple of different things from the dollar store. I picked up some plants. I picked up some sand and some moss and then I have a 
volcano that we had from our dinosaur set. If you don't have one of those, you can make your own. I used an empty yogurt container and then spray painted it, put on some hot glue, and then painted that red for the lava, which I'm going to stick right there for our volcano. I have an empty food container top that is clear and I'm going to use that for my water source for my play area. I have tinted some water blue. If you prefer not to use a liquid in your play area, you can absolutely use some maybe blue sand instead. You can also use sand in here alternately instead of the potting soil if you choose. I went on a hike and got some sticks. So we're going to put one of those in there. I have some rocks that I have from my son's rock collection. I'm going to stick some of those in there. And then you can fancy it up however you like. The kids can decorate up their area with their plants and their nature that they put in here that they've collected and then your habitat is ready for play and I cannot wait my granddaughter is going to be coming soon and I'm going to see what she does with it until next time.